This is our last video for chapter five. Uh, it's not um, looking at any particular section. Um, it's actually I'm giving a, an overview to chapter five. Okay, so kind of combining and looking at everything all at once. So really what we're wanting to do is we are going to be classifying, we're going to be identifying between ionic compounds, that's what we started with, and covalent. That was the second thing that we covered. So first off, let's look at kind of our definition or kind of our classification. How do we distinguish between ionic versus covalent? Sorry, ionic bonds, okay, are on it, are, blah, 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 our ionic compounds. And these are gonna be between a metal and a non-metal. And the metal is always listed first Okay, whereas in a covalent compound, this is going to be a non-metal with a non-metal. So if your formula starts with a metal, you know that it's an ionic compound. If your, component, if your formula starts with a non-metal, it is covalent. Okay, other ways to kind of classify metal versus non-metal Okay, metals are your cations or your positively charged species or the items, the, the elements on the left hand of the left hand side of the periodic table, left to the left of the jagged line. Nonmetals are your anions, something that's negatively charged, or from the right hand. For a covalent bond, you're looking at basically two elements from the right-hand side. Okay, two things that typically would form an anion. Okay, they're not really forming anions when they're in a covalent bond, but they typically they're the, the elements that are going to form an anion if they're if they're going to form one. Now our our Further definition or classification of what's happening in an ionic versus a covalent bond is in an ionic bond, we're doing, we're actually transferring electrons, okay? Cations or metals want to give up electrons. Anions or nonmetals want to accept an electron. So what's happening is our electron is moving from the metal to the nonmetal. Okay, so from uh, the metal to the non-metal. What happens in our covalent compounds is our covalent compounds, they are sharing electrons not always equally, but they do in fact share. So we can, uh, we can put that here. So sharing of electrons, if it's equal, right, it's nonpolar. If it's unequal, then we call that polar. All right, now our rules about naming for each of these. For the ionic compounds, 
the basic naming of what we're looking at is you do the names of the elements with the last element gets the I, D, E ending. Now, in general, that's actually the same for the covalent compounds. So the covalent compounds also get the names of the elements And the last element gets the IDE ending. The main distinction to initially is covalent also has an additional rule and that you need the prefixes to indicate the formula. So basically how many of each element are in there. So if you have prefixes in a name, that means you are looking at something that is covalent. If you don't have any prefixes, then you're looking at something that is ionic. Now we do have exceptions for both of these. So let's start with our exceptions of our ionic. The first kind of exception is that for the polyatomic ions, in general, they don't have the IDE ending. Instead, they have either an ITE or ATE ending. So nitrate, nitrite, phosphate, phosphite, those are your polyatomic ions. Okay, whereas nitride and phosphide are just the ions of nitrogen and phosphorus. Okay, no other elements there. The other exceptions for your ionic compounds are your transition metals. And remember, these are everything that's in group B. And we're also including tin and lead. So SN is tin, PB is lead. And the thing that we have to remember for them is we include the Roman numeral, which tells us what? Okay. The Roman numeral tells us the charge on the metal. I remember it tells us nothing about the formula. Now our exceptions. For the covalent compounds, we still have two there. The diatomics, remember there are seven of them that come in pairs. And get the element name. Mm -hmm. 
no dies, and no IDE ending. So remember, there's seven of them. They form a seven on the periodic table. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, uh, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And then hydrogen is also in that seven. The second exception that we have are the organic molecules. And we're not going to worry about them. Some examples are always helpful to have. So if uh, over on our ionic side, if we have, say, Na2S, okay, Na is sodium. It's a metal. That's how we know this is ionic. This is called sodium sulfide. If we had Na2SO4, okay, remember SO4, this is a polyatomic ion. So this is sodium sulfate. And, excuse me, should be SO3. Then as our last example, why don't we look at, um, oh no, it's SO4. I'm going crazy. SO4, yep, Na2SO4. Na2SO4. Um, we can use uh, another, we want to transition metals. So let's do Fe. SO4. Our basic name so far, we have iron and sulfate. But remember, iron is a transition metal, so we need a Roman numeral there. The sulfate ion, let me do this in a different color. We have SO4 2 minus. We only have one iron, so it has to be 2 plus. So we know that this is iron 2 sulfate. Over for our covalent compounds, we can look at, say, two examples where we have the same two elements but in different ratios. So this first one, this would be carbon monoxide. Second one is carbon dioxide. And if we had, say, just oxygen, this O2, we just call this oxygen. So again, I know I sound like a broken record, but I can't stress enough going through and working through as many examples as you can. Work through all of your QMP in your book, uh, the QMP within the section, the QMP at the end of the chapter, and work through the sapling learning um, examples. There's ones for each section, and then you have your chapter quiz. Okay, So lots of practice out there. Make sure you're um, practicing and not taking this for granted. You want naming to start to be um, kind of a second nature thing that you don't even think about. Okay, And the way that you get there is by practicing, practicing, practicing. Cannot stress that enough.